Our personality today is Chef Mame Boache. She's an internationally acclaimed chef and she's the CEO of Gastro. And before the break, we've been discussing what drives her, how she went from thinking she would end up being a medical doctor to a chef. And my question to her was that, you know, she could have decided to stay in the U.S., share her gifts with people in the U.S., and we only get to, you know, claim that she's Ghanaian and benefit from that, but she's come back home to share her gifts and talents with us. If you have any questions for her, let us know with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. And the WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. If you're outside Ghana, the country code is plus 233. Mommy, what made you decide to come back to Ghana? So coming back to Ghana is something that I've always wanted to do. Uh, I've been in the industry for 15 years now, working for many great restaurants, helping others build their empire. And, you know, my ultimate goal was to own my own restaurant at some point. And I figured, why not do it, you know, in my mother country, support the economy, also bring back what I've learned throughout my career, you know, showcase that here in Ghana. Let it be known that, you know, not all these high-end restaurants in Ghana are owned by, yeah. you know, outsiders. Like, you can have a young Ghanaian girl also owning a nice, fine dining restaurant, and which people are usually shocked when they walk in yeah. into, into gastro and they see, oh, you're the <laughs> owner? They were expecting maybe some Lebanese yeah. or, like, somebody else, and it's just like... Yeah, you know, we, we're, we're also doing it and we're also capable of doing it, which is definitely what inspired me to do this. How was the move like? And our viewers are looking at some of your pictures when you won uh, that competition. You look so different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, How long ago was scar- this? <laughs> this was actually filmed um, last year, April, so 2019, okay, April. you look different. I, I think it's why. the scarf. It's a, I yeah, had to I do the so. whole... I like, you know, I like that you're repping Ghana. The whole persona. <laughs> I even did my little Azonto dance at the end to How celebrate. How important is it for us to be authentic? Because sometimes when we find ourselves in certain spaces, it's easy for us to try to be something we are not thinking that's what the people want yeah you definitely have to work on just being yourself which is what i applied uh the model that i applied during the show you know people go on these kind of shows and try to do so many different things and try to fit in where i just went on and i said you know stick to what you know do what you got to do no need to try to do all these other things that all these other chefs are doing don't look to your left don't look to your right focus on the ingredients basically just be yourself do what you know best and just try to put that out there the best you can you know try to be yourself it's it's the best thing you can do and we're so proud of you for one even deciding to chase your dreams and succeed in the way that you have Thinking about coming back home is one thing. Making the actual move when you have a husband and a daughter is a completely different thing. How was that transition for all of you? Yeah, so that wasn't easy at all. You know, we're used to living in the U.S. We're used to a certain, you know, pattern of things, you know, even in the management side of the restaurant, you know, when we came like the staff are used to one thing you know and we're bringing in a different style of management and you know i have people that were telling me like that's not gonna work (laughs) you know our style of management is like equal i'm not yelling at anyone Mm -hmm. i just really want you to just do the right thing and just you know let's just work as a team as a family whereas people are telling me like no, 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 no. <laughs> it doesn't work like that in Ghana here you have to be strict you have to you like them. but you know luckily it worked out very well like i love my staff they really really like embraced the style that we came in with they didn't take advantage of it even though we give them the freedom to speak just really you know let us know if you have any ideas or just any kind of thing let us know they don't take advantage of it, and they just really love it. And, you know, they'll always say, oh, my God, you guys are the best Aww. managers and that kind of thing. And I'm just <laughs> like, no, I just want you to be yourself. I want you to be your best self. Gastro may not be the future for you, but once you're here, I just really want you to be the best. So it was an easy transitioning from what I'm used to in the U.S. to, you know, what's happening in Ghana here. But slowly it, it worked out. 
actually once again just being your authentic self and not bending i don't want to be the chef or the ceo that's on everybody's necks constantly yelling at them and treating them like they're less than you know wow and I, i'm glad you you're, you're doing that because not everybody comes back and you know people come back and they treat people as if they are below them so we're gonna now get the practicals of things we've talked enough you're gonna show us <laughs> The experience we'll get when we come to gastro. But before okay. that, we have some videos from Mami of her winning that competition that we've been talking about. So take a look at that video, and then we'll continue the conversation. I believe I'm the next top champion. I'm pretty confident in all my three dishes. Overall, I have no worries. I'm a great chef. I'm definitely the next top champion. So. And this dish is on the shopping block. Chef Matt, you've been shocked. Judges? Oh, Chef Matt, your food was delicious. Thank you. But your appetizer needed more acidity. And in the dessert, you had some undercooked phyllo and some undercooked pizzas. And so we had to chop you. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like I should win the competition, but I hope my cooking values about the same, but like are going to be, you know, out there uh, for everyone to see. And that means Chef Mame Wache, you are the chop champion. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you so much. I don't even know what to say. I just want to oh, <laughs> I want to do my African dance. This $10,000 is going towards opening my own West African restaurant. If these judges appreciate and enjoy my food, then I can imagine what the rest of the world would think. Next up here is Chef Mame Boache. So today we have a poto poto, which is a yam porridge. I'm a private chef in New York City. My food is a reflection of my dual upbringing in New York and Ghana, West Africa. No one can stand in my way when it comes to my bold, spicy flavors. Delicious. And then there's Chef Matt McPherson. I am the chef and owner of The Noodle Bar in Boston, Massachusetts. I consider myself a sustainable chef and zero waste chef. Anything we can't use, we compost. I believe in utilizing a product to the fullest extent so you aren't wasted. None of this is going to waste. To win this competition, I'm going to use a basket of ingredients very much different than other people can. Uh, ready to win. Beautiful. And finally, we have Chef David Sierra. In my own restaurant, but I just want to make a nice, simple comfort dessert. I'm making bourbon peach crumble with rosemary ice cream and chicken and waffle caramel. Right away, I start cooking my peaches because peaches take quite some time to cook down. I add in brown sugar and ginger because that's my West African stamp. Then I'm going to flambe the peaches with bourbon. Me and Mommy have two very different styles of cooking and flavor profiles. She has such a great palate, but I think I bring a much more creative side to this competition. I'm making a peach and pretzel tartlet with a smoked rosemary liqueur and a chicken and waffle twill. I have sugar, I have peaches, I taste the chicken and waffle taffy. Luckily, it doesn't taste too much like chicken. So I put that into the tartlet and then pretzel shortbread on top. And I wrap everything with phyllo dough. Filo dough is going to take a long time to cook, so to have that dough on the top, it will hopefully make it cook in time. I like everything that's in the basket. Mm -hmm. The pretzel shortbread is delicious. I love peaches. I'm even into this taffy. So it doesn't taste like chicken? It tasted more like a maple syrup taffy, so Good. Right. lucky for them. I would absolutely try and melt it somehow. Have you ever done that? Have you ever liquefied taffy before? Of course! <laughs> The only thing I'm really nervous about is the rosemary, because I can't take over a dish. All right, chefs. Now getting an experience of what we'll get when we go to gastro in East Ligon. Mommy will tell us all about gastro soon, but as you can see there, 
authentic Ghanaian meals presented in a way that you've never seen before. You go to gastro and you get all of these amazing meals. They're not just good for your taste buds, but the entire experience is something to die for. So right after this, we'll, Mommy will be walking us through how to, you know, make our local meals in a way that we've never seen before. This is innovation. I mean, when we talk about innovation, it's not only in the tech space, but even in what we eat. So if you have any questions for her, as we are going through this, let us know with the hashtag breakfast daily. The WhatsApp line is 0550585832. It's not every day that Ghanaians go abroad, gather talent, build their skills, and then come back home to share them with us. We're so proud of Mami Boache for all that she's achieved. And we're so thankful to have her in this country with us. So the next time you want to go out and take some great meals with your family, you know exactly where to go. Okay, so mommy, what do we have in front of us? Uh, so today what we're going to make is something simple yet uh, elegant and gastro that we do. It's on the menu. Uh -huh. It's called the bougie kinky. Bougie kinky? <laughs> yes, so you already know what bougie <laughs> means, fancy. So just basically transforming something that's like a popular uh, dish or snack uh -huh. in Ghana into something a little bit more vibrant Ooh, so okay. basically you have your um your normal kinky uh -huh. so this is the yeah the kinky that we yeah. usually see the fancy kinky uh -huh. that you usually see but instead um what we do at gastro is we add blueberries and Ooh. blackberries wow yes we make it more like um a parfait okay rather I've never seen that before. <laughs> yes. It's a little different. So mm -hmm. you add it in with some coconut milk. Okay. And where did you get this idea from? So, you know, I, I eat parfaits a lot, like mm -hmm. yogurt with the berries and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I love ice kinky. So, you know, one day I was just like, why not combine <laughs> the two, you know? And I was making it actually for my husband, and uh -huh. I was telling him, you know, let's try something else. And he had it, and he was like, oh, this has to go on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Is he usually the first person yes, to taste the crazy like stuff my, you make? Yeah, him, between him and my daughter, <laughs> like my biggest critics uh -huh. ever. So what, what, did, what did we just so add So I just added in a sweetener. I'm adding condensed milk this time around. Okay. But uh, to make it vegan... Mm -hmm. At gastro, sometimes we add different natural sweetness, agave, okay. or, you know, things that, you know, people are lactose intolerant. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, you put that in, and then you just blend it. Okay. Wow. It, it looks so good. Blend it till it's nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. This is very bougie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, here we have um, the bowls that are golden. And where do you get all these brilliant ideas you from? You know, like a mad scientist. Because you're on a path that I don't think anyone has walked on before. <laughs> like a mad scientist, sometimes it's hard to go to sleep. I lay down <laughs> and then I get these crazy ideas and then I wake up like... Let me write it down before I forget it in the morning. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, so, so for all the husbands and daughters who are watching us this morning, how important is it for entrepreneurs to get that support from their family? You know, and that's definitely one thing that you need. Like moving to Ghana wouldn't have been easy if I was by myself. But in this case, I had my husband join me. He left his job. Wow. Basically, he's an accountant. So yeah. it worked out perfectly for him to come with me yeah. to work as, you know, counting the money while I do the cooking. Because <laughs> you focus on the art <laughs> exactly. and, the, and the food. <laughs> exactly. So we top it off here with some fresh berries, okay. blueberries, some currants. Wow. It, it looks so good, and it looks healthy as well. Yeah, so this is a way for you to still eat your 
kinky. So if you're someone who does some, not like fruits and you yeah, would rather just stick yeah. to carbs and carbs, this is a great way for you to incorporate. And get you still get your get some that. vitamins, some antioxidants in wow. with the berries and stuff like that. So it definitely works out. Huh. What kind of stuff would we get on the menu when we come to uh, gastro? So because I'm already excited. The gastro menu is it's like a fusion. <laughs> Basically, you'll find some local traditional stuff like this with a twist to it, of course. And you know, you find some Caribbean. Is that cake? So this is definitely Co a coconut flakes. Coconut let, me, let me be bougie with it and not toasted, co toasted coconut, coconut flakes. flakes. Yes. And then here we have some <laughs> white chocolate. Hey, that we're, we're just gonna shave, to, shave on top. To ice cake. Yes. I'm gonna let Sophia taste this. It <laughs> adds so, a little extra. It's so delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So here, then you have your um. Oh my goodness. Your bougie kinky. Okay, so I'm gonna taste it, and while I do that, you can walk us through. Uh, the gastro experience. Yeah, so the gastro <laughs> experience. Basically, gastro is highlighted, G and H meaning for Ghana, and then gastro is short for gastronomy. So basically, ah. it's just having a, gastronoma, a ga gastronomic ex experience in Ghana. So when you come to gastro, starting from service, everything is very fine dining. The staff, service, pay attention to everything. They guide you through the menu. We have nice wines and cocktails that we create using using our local ingredients and stuff like that and the menu our goal is really to source from local farmers wow. local fishermen and stuff like that um so the menu is pretty much like a fusion of Ghanaian dishes caribbean you see caribbean dishes italian dishes just all with the everything twist, everything will have a little a touch of chef mame Bache in it so, so you're bringing the world to yeah, us yeah it's not your Ghana. normal it won't be your normal potato salad and <laughs> it won't be We're your, tired yeah, of potato salads. yeah exactly <laughs> it, it'll always have a twist with the gastro twist to it so it's like where do we you find the you gastro we're located in East Ligon on Jungle Avenue mm -hmm. and Oleander, not far from the ANC Mall. Oh, nice. Yes, we're also on Instagram, gastro underscore. I'm also on Instagram, chef mame underscore. You can find us. Hit Do you us have up. a YouTube Make channel? Because I feel like you should. <laughs> very soon, very <laughs> soon. Very soon. I, I definitely will work on that. What's and next in line for you? Uh, you know, my goal... Besides uh, making gastro uh, uh, a restaurant that will be all over the continent. You know, my goal is to really... I do a lot of, like, mission work in okay. Ghana as well. So, like, my goal is to just get gastro to become bigger where I can really support other, you know, young ladies and young men to work on, you know, becoming entrepreneurs and being open into, you know, getting into the culinary field and that kind of stuff. Okay, and this is the best kinky I've ever. This is bougie kinky. This isn't just any kinky. Okay, probably the healthiest kinky I've ever had in my life. <laughs> what drives you? I asked you that already. People see the successes, but was there ever a time where you wanted to quit? And oh what yeah, happened? of course. And you know, in this social media world that there is out there, you see others doing their thing and then you start to feel like oh but what am i doing wrong how come i'm not you know it's it's not easy in the culinary world when you're working for restaurants getting paid very little bit of money you know helping someone else build their empire and then you know you just really have to strive to want it do you have some people who don't mind working in a restaurant filled helping someone else build their um empire but I, I just always wanted to have my own, be my own boss, and be able to showcase my own food and my own style of cooking. So it's just really just pushing to want it for yourself. And that's really what I want to do for others, like letting them know that you don't have to be stuck working for someone all the time. You know, mm -hmm. if you're creative, you put it out there. It's like being an artist. You don't want to be painting for someone else you want to paint it and put your own signature, signature on it. Un under it and you know sell it to people for what you think is worth so that's basically what food is food is art it's true when you look at your 15 year old self what would you tell her about this journey uh, that she's she, she's about to embark on you know i would tell my 15 year old self like girl 
enjoy life because <laughs> being a chef, being in this industry is very, it's time consuming. It's time consuming, even though it be, it, once you have the passion for it, it's okay, but it's time consuming. You're sometimes at the restaurant from morning to evening, all day long, but that's what it takes to really build a brand, to really build your name. So it's just like be yourself and just, you know, meet as many people as you can because you need that to become the creative that you are today. How do you keep innovating yourself? Because after a couple of decades in the space, you can, you know, be tempted to just feel like you've arrived. Yeah, no, so it's definitely staying humble and not acting like you know it all or you've learned it all, or you've done it all. You, it's always about just looking at what others are doing. How can I also, you know, become a better person? How can I become a better chef? What am I missing? Learning other cultures, learning, listening to other people and not really thinking, you know, once you become, oh, you want chopped, so now you have a big head and you think, you know, you're the best chef in the world. But know. that's a big deal, though. It's definitely a big deal, but it's also, you know, something that's a humbling experience. I have people who reach out to me on social media just saying, you know, my daughter was really inspired by you. You were very humble, and which is what I really went on the show to showcase. Like, you know, I'm humble. I don't have to be this chef, you know, down in everybody else's food. Everybody cooks different, but, you know, in this case, I want... And, you know, it's just be humble. Wow. I, I, I mean, gastro again. What are your price points like? So gastro is actually set up to be welcoming to everyone. If you look at the gastro menu, we, we don't want gastro to be <clears throat> intimidating. We want everyone to feel welcome to come in gastro. So if you look at the gastro menu, you'll find stuff from like 25 cities, 35 cities, all the way up to 300 cities, really depending on what it is that you're ordering and who's ordering it. So we definitely want the young couples or the young <laughs> their first friends <laughs> yes, to feel comfortable to come into gastro and not feel like they have to bring all their life savings in. <laughs> and then we also want, you know, the bigger people who are well off to Can feel. afford to. Yes, to come in and feel as though, you know. I'm at gastro and I'm really having that fine dining gastro experience, you know, being given out by a Ghanaian chef, you know, I recognize the dishes on the menu and that kind of stuff. So Now you wear a lot of hats. You're a mother, you're a wife, you're a chef, you're an entrepreneur. How do you balance it all and how do you actually make time for yourself? So it's really, when you have the passion for what you do, it's not really work, really. That's what I... I say if you really have a passion for being a chef or cooking, it's really not work. When I'm at gastro, it's really like a fun moment. You know, I love teaching people. So all these young people that are coming to work at gastro, I love to get in the kitchen with them, just showing them different things. So it's, it's fun. And then, you know, just finding some time for yourselves. So gastro is closed on Mondays, everyone. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Throwing that we it need out to be. there. We're closed on Mondays. <laughs> Monday is my day to really <laughs> pull back and sleep all day long. And no be lazy. Phone calls and and be lazy wants. and not cook at home. And also having the right support system is great. Like my husband helps me out a lot a lot of things, you know, um, and just really being inspired by my daughter to always keep striving is what keeps me going and balanced. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I mean, it's, I, I enjoy it. I mean, listen, when I heard that she was coming, I didn't even eat this morning. I'm, like, I'm going to eat something really good, so let me clear my taste buds. But your story is such an inspiration. A lot of people go abroad. They don't even get to chase their dreams because they have to settle for whatever it is they can. So to mm -hmm. see a young Ghanaian actually go after her dreams, succeed, then come back home. I mean, talk about brain gain. So yeah. we're all going to go to gastro. We're going to support you. mommy. We're going to make her restaurant the biggest restaurant in Ghana <laughs> and the continent. And then we'll properly brag about taking Ghana to the world. Thank you. <laughs> the exactly. Way, guys. Exactly. Hi there. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe 
Like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.